Regosine regeneration pill for osteoporosis, combating osteoporosis one pill at a time. Before we get started, I'd like to explain what osteoporosis is. Osteoporosis is a debilitating disease that affects the bone density and bone strength. Individuals with osteoporosis face an increased amount, an increased risk in fall-related injuries and deaths, leading to an increased an increased number of hospitalizations, hospitalizations each year. These hospitalizations cost both the government and the people billions of dollars each year, which is where our product comes in. The purpose of our product is to attack the underlying condition of patients with osteoporosis, which is an imbalance of bone destruction versus bone regeneration. In someone without osteoporosis, the bone is being broken down and rebuilt at a rate that is balanced. Our product will attack the osteoclasts or the bone crushers, which are working at a faster rate than the osteoblasts or the bone builders. We will be using a calcium carbonate nanoparticle and a calcitonin hormone, which will be encapsulated in a pill to protect it from the acidity in our body. The calcitonin hormone is produced in the thyroid gland and it decreases the osteoclast activity. We will use surfactants, which are soluble compounds to limit the agglomeration of the nanoparticles, which reduces its size and facilitates the, tra facilitates the traveling through the bloodstream. The calcitonin will be released when there is a pH level of 7 to 7.4, which, which is where the osteoclasts are the most active. The pill will erode when it enters the stomach because of the acidity, but the nanoparticle and the drug itself will be the ones traveling through the bloodstream. Our competition would consist of the use of four central drugs that are currently being used to treat osteoporosis. This includes alendronite, rhizronite, zoledronic acid, and ebandronite. All four of these drugs tend to primarily focus on reducing the amount of bone loss that patients undergo in osteoporosis. However, in addition, our product will also be able to create stronger bones in the human body and reduce the amount of bone fractures that patients undergo because of osteoporosis. Some of the side effects that these four drugs tend to have is that they all tend to cause nausea, weakness, tiredness, and vomiting, and can go to the extremities of having severe pain in the joints and muscles. One side effect for our drug would tend to be that it can cause the small, uh, it has a small insignificant probability of getting cancer, which is 5%, and this was found in a recent study for calcitonin, which was used in a nasal spray, and it had a probability of 2.5%. In terms of profit, our biggest competitor would tend to be Alejonite, which tends to make a profit of around 10 to $11 billion a year, to which we will surpass by 2 to $4 billion if we range our prices from around 100 to 160. The total time from clinical trials to mass production will be approximately 12 years. Out of those 12 years, 10 years would be used for clinical trials. By 2032, we plan to start looking into a second drug that would enhance the production of osteoblasts, which are the bold bone builders, while still attacking the osteoclasts, which are the bone crushers. Eventually, we will be able to create one pill that will effectively cure osteoporosis. After taking into, into consideration the cost of clinical trials, drug manufacturing, and personnel, we've estimated that throughout the development of our drug, it will cost anywhere from 43 to $48 million. As you can see in the chart, we will be utilizing $5 million in marketing, and with that marketing money, we will be targeting ourselves towards clinics that have osteoporosis patients, uh, with that, the osteoporosis patients that have minor to moderate um, osteoporosis side effects. While looking into funding opportunities, we saw that many companies or government organizations such as NIH provide a vast amount of money going from $2 million while still leaving an open window to get additional awards throughout the development of our drugs. So while we face, while if we were to face new prices that were to come, we can still get awards that will provide us with a minimum of $100,000 each. Thank you. I'm confused about the clinical trial phase. So can you go back a slide? No, okay. Oh, no, no, go. So one more. There you go. No, there you go. <laughs> Clinical trials would be covered due to the NIH paying for clinical trials. 
Can you explain that to me? Oh, because during uh, while we were looking at funding opportunities, we saw that the NIH uh, for this certain funding opportunity, they would be taking care of, um, and because for this, if we need any clinical trials, they will be taking care of uh, most of the process, so they would be paying for it, and they would be ensuring that the safety of the uh, person that's uh, getting tried on, so everything would be tested and prevented with their jurisdiction before it happens. Okay. Um, my other question is, in an early slide, <clears throat> you said you were going to have 12 to 13 billion dollars of profit. Have you confused profit with revenue? That, that, that's a pretty big number. Maybe Howard can help me with that question, but I'm, that's, that's, that's a lot of profit. Yeah, I think we meant revenue because we've, we were looking into it. There's around a million patients in osteoporosis, and we were thinking since a million patients for osteoporosis are needed, we used an example, Rhizernite tends to be priced around 140. And when we multiplied both, we got around 140 million. And then considering these drugs are technically a week for weekly use, we multiplied those two and realized that it would be around $8 billion, but that was around 2016. And considering that osteoporosis is rising in numbers throughout every year, we figured that those numbers would be increasing as more people would be needing it. It's very important that you understand the difference between revenue, which is the top line, and profit, which is after everything gets paid for. Okay. Okay, so let's have some science questions. <laughs> um, okay, so your drug is made out of particles that have uh, calcium carbonate, which is a nice non-toxic thing that can help build bone, and you showed how it was gonna encapsulate and could get where it was needed to go, but then the, 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 the small size calcium carbonate is not, doesn't seem to be the main thing. The main thing is the, the uh, drug that is also included that is the suppressor of the bone killer. Okay, so it, I guess the, there's, there's a whole bunch of levels of questions. So why do you need this complex structure with the calcium carbonate if the primary active ingredient is the drug. Um, and if the drug has been shown to have cancer risks, isn't that likely to make people run screaming from it? Okay. So the calcium carbonate nanoparticle, that would be like what's delivering it. So the, we chose the calcitonin because um, it showed that it had immediate effect on suppressing the osteoclast activity, which is what we're trying to do. And so we're using the calcium carbonate nanoparticle because it's like a more targeted approach instead of, uh, instead of like um, being like such a broad approach like the other ones that are using the pills. And what was your other question? So it, the calcium carbonate is not meant to be a calcium source? No, it's that was just like um, what's delivering the drug. So the drug will be inside of it and then it will be released. I think there are way easier to make delivery vehicles if it's not being a calcium source. Why did you pick calcium carbonate as the delivery vehicle? Uh, because of it's already being used as a it because of its drug delivery properties because it's already being used like for cancer. So like it like targets the cancer cells and it delivers the drug. So because of that um, drug delivery method, we chose calcium carbonate. How does it target the cancer cells? Oh, because, well, it's already, like, um, programmed in a way, like, to target the cancer cells. Well, that's what we read about, how it's being used as a drug delivery method. But, like, basically, like, we chose it because of its drug delivery method. Okay. I agree that the that um, any amount of cancer potential is, is a worry for consumers, but just as a, as a presentation, what drew you to this uh, subject of osteoporosis for, for a young group of people? <laughs> okay, so it's because when we were, consider, like, we were, we were thinking about what we were going to do, um, we were just you know, brainstorming, and then Marvin, he, we were talking about like osteoclast and osteoblast because of, well, I have anatomy, and so he came up and we were, he was like, couldn't this potentially cure osteoporosis? And we were like, 
oh wow that's cool so then we were like <laughs> let's let's look into it and then like as i thought about it more it's like it would be interesting to find something that can cure or like better treat osteoporosis because like um it was mentioned earlier in the slide millions of thousands of people are being put into nursing homes because of this and i was like well what, when i grow older i'm gonna be old and what if i have this disease <laughs> and i was like well do I want my kids to put me in a nursing home because they know <laughs> <laughs> because because I'm they know I can break at any moment. I want my I want my kids to take care of me because I you know I was there, I want to see my children, I want to see my grandchildren. I was like I want to find something that could potentially keep. Them. We have time for one more question if there is one. Um so when you were pricing out your your drug um you mentioned it was around a hundred, a little over a hundred dollars per dose. Um, what did you look at the reimbursement for the existing drugs? Is is there coverage from your healthcare provider? Or are these people paying directly out of? In their some pocket? cases, the healthcare would be paying for it, and in some cases, for example, um, zoledronic acid costs around a thousand two hundred for one dosage a year, and patients would need to be. That's a really painful um, medication, but healthcare in some cases would pay for like around half of it, depending on like the financial status of the person. Okay, so that's definitely something to consider, especially as you were talking about weekly dosage for this, for someone to pay, you know, and basically double the price that they're paying. Um, the benefit needs to be there, um, and the risk of cancer is maybe a little scary for people. Um, so those are things to consider, because again, the cost could be a deterring factor from the benefit. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you.